Hello, I am meteorologist Charles Aldrich with the National Weather Service Forecast Office in Lubbock, Texas. And we will be going over Module 4 of the Online Skywarn Training Session, which will be on tornadoes and other circulations. The first circulation type we're going to be talking about is the one most people associate with a severe thunderstorm when they hear circulation, and that is a tornado. Now, what is a tornado? Well, a tornado is a violently rotating column of air which is attached to the base of the thunderstorm, usually the wall cloud, and it must be in contact with the ground. A visible funnel is not required to have a tornado, which is most, what most people think of when they think of a tornado, but you do not have to have that funnel. You just have to have a rotating circulation that is in contact with the ground. And usually to find this circulation, usually you need to look for rotating debris near the ground, which could be in the form of swirling dust from a field. It can be grass and leaves and twigs lofted that's rotating. Or it could even be debris from a building that the tornado has hit but you have to have that circulation in order to have a tornado. Now the thing most people associate with a tornado is the funnel cloud itself. And yes, the to uh, funnel cloud is a part of the tornado, but it is not the actual tornado itself. The funnel cloud is a rotating funnel-shaped lowering extending below a cloud. So it's just a slow appendage that's extending usually from the base of the wall cloud and it does have rotating winds which is in part what makes the funnel itself but they are not in contact with the ground again as it is not the tornado itself but if you do see a funnel cloud associated with a thunderstorm monitor it very closely for the signs that the funnel could grow into a tornado and it usually means that a tornado is usually likely or imminent whenever there's a visible funnel. But it does not always mean that a tornado will happen. The next type of circulation we're going to talk about is a land spout tornado. And usually these types of tornadoes are not associated with severe thunderstorms. We're usually associated with towering cumulus clouds that are either developing to become thunderstorms or are thunderstorms already. And when the updrafts of these towering cumulus move over zones of wind shear, this is usually when we see the land spout tornado. And it's usually visible from the dust lofted from the ground and a little bit of debris um, from whatever it comes in contact with. Now, though, these are very weak, especially compared to a tornado but they are still capable of producing structural and property damage such as it might still throw a few shingles off of a roof or it might cause just a little bit of roof damage or it could throw around a few empty garbage cans or even damage a weakly um, constructed fence. Now one of the best tools a storm spotter can have while out in the field storm spotting is not a radar image or a satellite image. It's the visual indications within the thunderstorm of a possible tornadic formation. And uh, here over the next few slides I'm going to show you some of these visual clues that can help identify uh, the possibility of a tornado forming. And the first clue is a moderate to large circular updraft base which is the wall cloud itself as you can see in this picture right here you see part of the cloud is lower than the rest of the cloud and this is what we call the wall cloud and this is the updraft of the thunderstorm and if this is forming usually it's going to be rotating in which the updraft is rotating and this is a precursor to a possible tornado and another indication is an increasing spin of this cloud base. So if the rotation of this cloud base continues to increase in velocity, then that is another indication that a tornado is likely. Now, this does not mean that a tornado will happen. It means that one is possible or likely to happen. And it's something that you need to watch out for because there's, not a, there's also not a set time uh, for when this tornado is going to form. It can form within a matter of seconds or it can be even several minutes 
before a tornado forms, if one forms at all, within the wall cloud. Another visual clue of possible tornado formation is the formation of a clear slot, which is a visually brighter area within the wall cloud itself. And this will encircle the wall cloud and sometimes has a rain curtain associated with it as well. And here the clear slot is outlined by the yellow dashed line. And as you can see, that area that is outlined is a little bit brighter colored than the rest of the wall cloud itself. And that right there is the clear slot. And then the yellow arrows, as you can see here, are pointing out the rain curtain that is encircling the clear slot as well. And whenever you start to see this clear slot uh, form, a uh, tornado can form within just minutes. Um, and that could be a minute or two as well, as soon as a minute or two. Um, if a tornado does not form, then the outflow will undercut the wall cloud and could inhibit tornado formation. Now one of the biggest issues that a storm spotter can run into while storm spotting is dealing with tornado and funnel lookalikes. And one of the biggest lookalikes of tornadoes and funnels is scud clouds. Now scud clouds are just harmless little cloud fragments that uh, usually extend low to the ground and they can sometimes extend from the base of the thunderstorm around the wall cloud. and nine times out of ten can look like a tornado uh, as you can see here there's a picture of an appendage from the base of a thunderstorm and I'm going to ask the question of is this rotating about a vertical axis and I will give you a second or two to uh, answer this question to yourself if you said no to this question well you would be correct this is not a rotating funnel. There is no tornado associated with this uh, cloud appendage. It is a piece of scud cloud. And even though this is a still image and not a video, uh, one way we could tell this is a scud cloud and not a funnel is we do not see any striations within the cloud appendage itself to show that there is rotation with it. And a lot of times this is what you can see in a still photo of a severe thunderstorm that has rotation in it. Is that barber pole striation look to it. That and this appendage is very disorganized as well. So this is just one thing to look at if you're trying to determine whether or not the appendage from a cloud is rotating or not. Now I'm going to show you some more scud cloud pictures to kind of get a good idea 
of what could be scud and what could be a funnel cloud. And here in this picture that you can see right here, it, when you first look at it, it looks like it could be a wall cloud. Uh, but as you can see, uh, if you look very closely at the cloud base, you can see that the scud cloud and the base of the cloud are separated and not attached to each other. And also, there's just no signs of rotation with this as well, and it's a very disorganized cloud as well. And in this picture, it uh, looks like it could be a funnel cloud. Uh, if you look at the base of it, just looking at the still image, it looks like there could be some rotation with this uh, cloud feature. Uh, but in all actuality, this is also a scud cloud as well and is not a funnel cloud and does not have rotation with it. Uh, this is most likely part of an updraft of a thunderstorm uh, where there is very, very moist air at the surface and as soon as it's lifted up to go into this thunderstorm it condensates and becomes a cloud uh, but like, even though it's touching the ground or, or as it looks like it's touching the ground uh, it is still not a funnel cloud no matter how much it appears so regardless of how much it may look like a funnel cloud or tornado if you don't see any rotation with it it's only a scud cloud so before you make that report into the weather service that you see a funnel cloud, a tornado, or a rotating wall cloud, make sure that it is rotating and look for some of the signs that I mentioned about the rotation, especially with the striations uh, usually associated with rotation as well. Because these, uh, these reports are very important to us whenever it comes to uh, warning decision making. Now when you're out storm spotting, one thing you will not always have on your side, no matter how flat of an area it is, is good visibility. And sometimes it will be an obstructed view, whether it be with uh, higher humidity, it gives the um, air more of a milky or filmy look, or if uh, a storm has a lot of rain associated with it, you know, such as a high precipitation supercell. And this picture right here, I think, is a good example of that. Uh, yeah, if you look off in the distance, you can see uh, an object of some sort. Uh, you can tell it's a cloud. It's just a matter of what it is. Uh, so by looking at this picture, what do you see? And I will give you a second or two to think about. If you said tornado for your answer, well, you're correct. This is a tornado. If you said a large wedge tornado, or you're even more correct, it is a large wedge tornado. And I will outline it here with uh, yellow lines so you can see where the edges of the tornado are. Now the left side of the tornado, the edge of it, is uh, easier to discern where it is. There's a sharper contrast between uh, where there's a clear area of air versus where the actual funnel is. But the right side is a little harder to see, and that's probably due to some rain. There might be a little bit of rain wrap associated with this. But if you look closely where that yellow line is, there is a little bit of a clear slot to the right of there. Uh, it's, but this uh, is definitely a large wedge tornado, and a very dangerous one at that, of one of this size. So it's just a few things to think about whenever you're out storm spotting to make sure you know what's there. And I'm going to end this training session with a few pictures of tornado damage from a tornado that occurred near CV, Texas. Uh, this tornado was rated an EF3 and had estimated wind speeds of 150 miles an hour. And at least one point, the tornado was three quarters of a mile wide. And it traveled mostly over fields of juniper and mesquite. And it, it hit a few structures, but not too many. But the structures it did hit, it caused significant damage to. 
as you can see here with this single family home, the roof was ripped off, thrown, and completely destroyed, as were several of the walls, and some of the walls were still intact, but they collapsed. Uh, so this was some devastating damage done to a home, and uh, this can happen to anything. A tornado can pick up a vehicle and throw it as well. So these are all just incentives uh, to stay away from, out of the path of a tornado and stay a safe distance away as well. But we will have the next training module, which is module five, will be on reporting and safety, and we'll go in further depth about safety practices when out spotting and reporting severe weather.